Hi everyone, let's run through a really thorough physical exam on a chicken today, as well as many of the key diseases you'll be looking for along the way. Hopefully this can help point you in the right direction for what could be going on if your bird is looking off colour and give you an indication of what you can do at home or when you need a vet or a euthanasia. Our first vital piece of an exam is the distance exam. Birds will usually not show behavioural signs of disease until the illness is quite progressed. They are the epitome of a prey species, so at the risk of being picked off by a predator as the weakest link, they will deny, deny, deny and pretend all is fine until it is really not fine. It might be that you've noticed something obviously wrong about the body itself, or maybe this is just a routine exam for you. But if you're noticing severe behavioural changes like sitting fluffed up, not eating, then often by the time you've noticed something, she is already critical and needs emergency care to survive. So a fluffed up chook squats down, they often have squinty eyes or intermittently closing. This is what we very scientifically call the sick bird look, SBL. This is a sign of critical disease in birds, meaning end stage debilitation of her body systems. If she is already at the state where her comb is changing a bluey purple colour, she is wide open mouth breathing and struggling for air, she cannot stand or her eyes are mostly closed, then at home treatment will not be an option for you. In these cases she is suffering significantly and if you cannot take her to a bird vet for emergency treatment, she needs to be humanely euthanized to put her out of her suffering. Handling a very sick bird can push them over the edge, so we do need to be calm but deliberate. Put your hands directly over the bird's wings, over her back and grasp her body this way. Just note here that birds do not have a diaphragm, they do have to actively breathe with the body wall. Okay, so do not put pressure on her keel or her abdomen or you're going to make it more difficult for her to breathe. Now what I do to look at the head, unless you've got someone to help, is tuck her gently under one arm. This can be a little tricky without practice, so alternatively, use a towel and lay it over her back. Then wrap with just a little pressure over the top of the wings to keep those wings down. And now we can investigate the head. A chicken's comb and wattles should be red and clear, but there is a little bit of variation here because when they're in the laying season, their legs and comb go darker red. When they're off lay, they will be a little bit paler and likewise with young birds that haven't come into puberty yet. However, very pale can certainly be an indication of poor blood supply, severe anemia, maybe they're losing blood somewhere like mites or internal bleeding. If it's very dark and turning a purpley blue colour, that's usually from shock, often from septicemia or severe respiratory distress, not enough oxygen getting around the body. They're really ill if you see this. And then we get things like yeast infections causing a white film, pox virus, which looks like little warts, and certainly plenty of little wounds, usually from other hens pecking at each other. That comb should sort of have like a waxy sheen to it. Now a shrunken dry comb is often a sign of dehydration, and if that comb is usually upright but suddenly goes floppy, that's gonna be a sign of severe dehydration. And finally, we can have swelling of the comb and wattles with an upper respiratory tract infection called foul cholera. Have a look at the eyes now. They should be clean and clear. If we have a graying iris, sometimes looks sort of blue and a persistently constricted pupil, a pinpoint pupil that doesn't open up even in the dark, this is likely from a virus called Merrick's disease. Nasty, untreatable virus that causes cancer in many different areas of the body. If you see mucus bubbling from the eye, this likely indicates a sinus infection, which sits just below and in front of the eye. That's where the sinus is. And likewise, this is where you'll see swollen sinuses as well. When birds produce pus, the pus turns hard and cheesy very quickly. It's different to mammals. So with a sinus infection, you'll often see swelling in front of or around the eye. And there may be cheesy pus in the sinus, which needs to be surgically removed. This often throws people off who think that the eyeball itself is sinking and this is usually how they present at the clinic, booked in for a sinking eyeball or eye issues. You may or may not see a little mucus from one or both of the nostrils as well, that will also indicate an upper respiratory tract 
or sinus infection. So the way that we restrain her head to look inside the mouth is you're going to place the palm of the hand on the back of the head and then you're going to use your thumb and finger to gently hold on either side of the base of her beak. Expect her to tell you no thank you for a moment, <laughs> they don't like being told to stay there. But it only takes a couple of seconds and once she relaxes, you just gently open that beak and apply a little pressure with your thumb and finger to hold it open. You should have complete control here, you don't need to press hard. Now have a look inside, can you see any growths? The wet form of the pox virus can cause warty growths in there which are horrible for the hen and can even restrict her breathing. If there's a lot of mucus at the back of the throat, that's often a sign of either dehydration or respiratory infection. Look for ulcers and also check that there are no white plaques. We call it a pseudomembrane, these white plaques. It's that white lining that usually indicates a yeast infection and that can affect the mouth and certainly down into the crop and further along the digestive tract as well. And finally, if you look at the top of the mouth, you'll see the hard palate, which we call the coanal slit. Now behind or under the slit is actually continuous with the nasal passage and sinuses. So you can see a lot of stringy mucus up there when you have an upper respiratory tract infection. Those little spikes are called the papillae. They should look sharp. If they're blunted, that could be a sign that you have a vitamin A deficiency in the diet. Now we're gonna move down the neck to the base of the neck and have a feel for the crop. The crop is the big storage chamber that sits here at the front. This is the first place that food goes when it's been swallowed, before slowly emptying into the stomach. Chooks forage throughout the day of course, pretty consistently, so you should be able to feel at least some food in there at any given time. If it's empty, that means they're probably not eating. If it's very large, it may not be emptying properly and we call this crop stasis which can lead to a condition called sour crop. Basically the food sits stagnant and causes infection. Okay, so we do want to make sure that the crop is emptying the way it should and the way you do that is just check the crop first thing in the morning before she's had access to breakfast. It certainly should have emptied properly overnight. Now let's have a look at the skin here. Be gentle if she's going through a molt and has new baby blood feathers still wrapped in a sheath. She'll be feeling extra sensitive and you don't want to break those blood feathers because they can bleed as well. Obviously note any wounds on the body which are often on the neck and back if they're inflicted by other chickens or roosters. Check closely for external parasites, mites or lice. They will scurry out of the light when you part the feathers so look closely but you can see them with the naked eye usually. You'll often see heavy infestations lingering down around the vent area and in bulk they can actually look like dark dust. Lice egg sacs look like concrete balls of white which actually attach to the base of the feathers and they're often found hanging off from down around the underside below the vent or have a check between the legs as well. One spot to check is right at the base of the tail here you'll find the preen gland. You might have to hunt a little bit. This gland produces a sebaceous, waxy sort of waterproof fluid, but this little gland can develop an abscess on occasion, so check there's nothing funky going on there. Just a quick note that bruising in birds appear green, so the pigment in our blood, in mammalian blood, that causes our yellow-coloured bruises is called bilirubin. In birds, they have Billy Verdon, that's their equivalent, and Verde means green. So it actually looks like quite a striking colour, almost like a highlighter. Keep your eyes peeled for that. This is a good time now to move around to the back of the vent. Just inside the vent are the rectum and vagina and a hen. So faeces and eggs, as well as the bird's version of urine, all emerge from the vent. It should be pink, it should have a reflex wink when touched, I know that's a weird term to use. This is where you'll check for diarrhea. Mucky feathers with runny poo below the vent will indicate diarrhea. The vent can prolapse as well, meaning the tube comes out of the body. This needs urgent attention to replace it and treat the underlying cause, which is usually a cause of inflammation, 
either in the rectum or in the vagina. So we could be looking at an issue in either of those areas. Below the vent, around the backside, underneath a little, you may see a big, hard, distended abdomen. This is not normal, but it's a common disease presentation. This means something on the inside is distending that abdomen, and it's usually not good. It also makes it harder for her to breathe. Common causes of a hard distended abdomen here are a pus-filled infected uterus, which needs surgical removal, or fluid accumulating in the abdomen from reproductive disease or cancers or liver and heart issues. So it does tend to be a pretty bad sign. There are some easily manageable causes of a distended abdomen, but she'll likely need a bird vet to figure out what's going on in there. In my experience, the easily manageable, treatable causes are certainly the minority of cases. Now it is worth just noting how hard she's needing to breathe. Your vet, of course, will have the ability to listen to the lungs with a stethoscope, but at home, you're gonna be looking for things like open mouth breathing or even a tail bob. A bird that's breathing harder than it should has a characteristic bobbing of the tail. If you see that, it's not normal. Birds are very efficient at breathing, very different to mammals, they have a different system. So if they're struggling, then something is really going wrong and already quite progressed. Okay, wide open mouth breathing persistently and especially if there's a colour change to the comb means a vet visit to a bird vet for emergency help or euthanasia. She's literally suffocating. Please do not leave her to suffer at home. If a vet is not an option for you, you need to help her on her way. Now, if she is struggling to breathe or she's very stressed, then leave her standing because lying them on their back at the stage will make it harder for her to breathe. But if she's doing fine, then you can place your hands over her wings and very gently lie her on her back between your knees. She should actually lie really calmly here. This is a good chance to look at her keel bone or her breast bone. As a general rule, the breast muscle on either side should come down in a nice soft triangle to show she's in a healthy weight. If it's thick and squashy like a heart shape on either side, she's overweight and we see this in our meat breeds more often. If it's sunken and concave, she's underweight. Now there are definitely breed differences, so have a check online so you know what to expect with your breed, but usually if they're underweight or emaciated, it's pretty obvious. Check the legs while she's rolled over like this. Her scales should be smooth. If they're raised and ragged, you're likely dealing with scaly leg mite, which needs treatment. Check the bottom of the feet for any black scabs or swelling, which could indicate an infection called bumblefoot. And check for any swollen joints. If you're dealing with multiple swollen joints of the feet, this will likely not be bumblefoot. It may be if it's really progressed, but usually we're looking at a condition called gout, which is a lot scarier, and they are going to be super sore. By this time, it's usually a matter of figuring out why they have gout to protect the others, but really helping her on her way. Put one finger into the ball of each foot here and push the legs closer to the body. When you do this, they should grasp your finger like a newborn baby. This reflex is what allows them to sleep on a perch at night. A paralyzed or weak leg will remain floppy. Now remember to check for lice eggs while you're looking under here. This is often where you'll find them and double check for any green bruising. If you have a bird that has eaten rat bait, for example, and is bleeding out passively under the skin, this is where it will pull just because of gravity. Check for any keel injuries now or any ulceration or bruising. This may tell us that they're lying down for unacceptably long periods of time and are very sick, or that the bedding they're lying in is damp and high in waste products and needs much more frequent cleaning. All right, that's about us. If you're lucky enough to have a bird vet handy, they will of course do many more really important tests like an internal cloacal exam, a faecal exam, testing the contents of the crop for infections, blood work, imaging, and much more to get to the bottom of what's going on. But this should be a pretty solid start for you at home, at least to point you in the right direction. Remember, even if you don't put a high value on the individual hen, it can be really beneficial to even do a post-mortem exam to understand what was going on because it may be something infectious, something that needs addressing to protect the rest of the flock. Okay, all the best. Good luck. Bye-bye.